Well, my father worked on the railway, uh, um, delivery driver. My mother was a nurse by trade, but of course, uh, up until the war started, they'd bring a meal. Um, when the war started, then she went back to nursing. Um, my father died in 1939, so of course she was a widow and had to support, well, support us both. The year the Second World War started. Pardon? The year the, year the Second World War started in yeah. 1939. Yeah, 1939. Do you have memories from, from the Second World War from well, growing up? Eh. As, as a boy, um, the army had a, an anti-aircraft gun close by near the quarry and we used to go and talk to the soldiers and then walk into school after the raid bomb Nottingham. Uh, there was shrapnel all over, over the place and we were walking down trying to pick these bits of shrapnel up. But that was, you know, the main... Oh, I left school in 1942 and went to work on the railway uh, in the signal boxes, um, various signal boxes in Nottingham area. Then I was a signalman on my own right. Um, and then 1940, well, 1946, had to go and register for national service. Uh, I went down the office to register, and uh, when they found out that I was a railway man, they said, oh, Royal Engineers. And I said, well, I don't want to go in the Royal Engineers. I want to go in the Navy. So he said, oh, all railwaymen go into the Royal Engineers, into their own railway call. So I walked out of the office where I went to register and went down and volunteered for the Navy. And that was in, what would it be, October 1946. And I went into the Navy January Forty-seven. So, do you do you remember the days when you when you started, when you went to the to sign up? Oh sign yeah. They, they yeah. Fun memories were you there with your friends? Well, it, it, um, I uh, I got my papers in the beginning of January nineteen forty-seven, and I had to report to uh, the recruiting office at Derby. They sent a train warrant and everything and I went on the 28th of January and we spent the night in Derby and then we all went by train to a place called Alsager near Stoke-on-Trent and there was a, a training camp there, HMS Excalibur and that's where I did my part one training. And what did that training involve? Was well it? you know marching, the, it was the seamanship side of the Navy. Uh, I was I went in as a stoker, but you, everybody does part one, and then uh, you then go on to engine room training. So um, I think January went well, January the twenty eighth, and we did part one there. Everything to do with the Navy, the seamanship side of the Navy how to tie a knot, and how to uh, sling a hammock and how to put it together, you know, hold it up when you've done. Um, and all your kit, you had to have all your kit, well, I forget how many inches, but it was, say, uh, 10 inches. Everything had to be 10 inches with your name name showing. It was, it was good, it was good. Uh, the first ship I went to, it was HMS Aurora cruiser, uh, and it was being handed over to the Chinese, and we were training Chinese stokers to do, you know, it was mainly Ch Chinese with a, a British backup. Um, can't try and think how long I was on that. I wasn't on long. Um, January. Anyway. Um, we handed it over to the Chinese. Um, that was the first time I'd ever been abroad. I uh, went to... Uh, can't think if we called in at Gibraltar that time. I know we, we called in at Gibraltar either one way or the other. 
and then around the time. So that was yes, that was the first first time I've been away from from the UK. Wasn't the last. <laughs> and then I got a a draft to HMS Comb as a destroyer in the Far East Fleet, mm -hmm. China Station. And I went out there in July, July 1949, and I was out there, um, July, 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 two years and eight months out there then. Did you have any other experiences of direct combat such as this not, in your not, time in Korea? Um, we came, we went back to Korea and, um, Everything well, uh, funny experiences. Then it didn't affect me in as much as um, there was a, a bay in Korea, and the trains used to run along the coast, and the the communists had um, guns along the embankment, so they put the ship in the bay, try to pot the you know pot shot at the trains and also to keep the the other guns quiet. Well the ship that we relieved was an American battleship, the Missouri. Well the Chinese didn't fire at it because uh, they opened fire with their guns uh, and sort of wiped them out. So we went into the bay, she went back to Japan. We anchored in the bay. We hadn't been there long. Uh, all the guns on the shore opened fire on us because we were in a little ship and our, our, our couple of guns weren't like the battleship guns. So we had to slip the anchor, left the anchor there and moved out the bay. Uh, that happened again a bit later on. But uh, then through my Navy life, uh, um, just trying to think, um, the only other conflict, if you could call it a conflict, was uh, in the 1960s, yeah, 1960s, um, Indonesia tried to invade Malaya, or Malaysia as it had become then, um, and we then, I was on the, a guided missile destroyer then, and we went, again, we were going to Australia for the fleet visit, um, we didn't go, uh, we were doing patrol up and down the straits between Indonesia and Malaysia. But there was no, no shots fired in anger. I think it was just the presence of a British warship there. 